Well, it's funny that you talk about the um, the percentage rate, right? Because yeah. one and a half or two and a half percent does not seem like very much. But I mean, if you're already operating at that level, oh, so one, if you're already operating at that level, one to one and a half percent is is a significant gain. Um, but also, like if you're if you're improving one percent each month. I mean, after six months, that's a 6% increase. Like that's, that's a lot. It's significant. Well, the more important thing is not the gain. It's the potential loss. See, this is what people yes. forget about training. Just because I train doesn't mean I get a positive adaptation. This is, see, this is going to. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. So when it comes to training, there's stuff called maladaptation or kind of an adaptation we don't want. Uh, I like to talk about almost like when you're, when you're in math class, you know, you'd have an equation and you'd, you'd solve it. You'd hit, you'd type in your calculator, those CI-83s, you'd enter it all in. You'd get an answer. And then all of a sudden you got your test back. You'd show all your work. And then all of a sudden you got the, you, the answer's not even remotely close. And you're like, wait a second. You go back through, you're like, I think I did everything right, but my answer's not even close. I think people think because they just show up and do work, they're going to become some like, incredible BA who's like this beast who runs, you know, four minute miles and can do 40 <laughs> pull-ups. They think just because they work now, yes, obviously you need to be consistently working or else nothing's going to happen. We all know the magic is consistency, mm -hmm. but just because I do work doesn't mean I progress in the way or I, that I want to or need to as specific to my goals. So like, for instance, like, if we think about like trees and a branch or a tree and we've got roots and we got the branches, your capacity is like the roots. So that's your low intensity work. That's your ability to just endure, to just low intensity durability. That's the ability I'm going to be up for 18 hours and we're just going to keep working until the sun goes down. We're going to keep working low intensity durability. That's my roots. That's your foundation of your house. The bigger the roots, what? the bigger, the stronger the tree. Your branches is like your high intensity work. Now, if you water the branches, doesn't mean the roots get stronger. So no. when you water a tree, you should water the roots because mm -hmm. if you water the roots, the roots grow deeper, bigger, you know, deeper, bigger, stronger. And then the branches that are on that tree can be larger. They can, you can have more branches and overall it's a stronger tree. If I just go and water the individual branches, that's like just doing a bunch of high intensity training. If the branches start outgrowing the roots, what happens to the tree when we know that the branches would break off? So what I'm saying is most people, and actually we've seen this at a lot of different selection courses is there is so much high intensity and that's due to just the nature of your guys' jobs and selection courses that we actually see a maladaptation or a negative trend when it comes to shrinking the roots and the branches are growing out. So you feel like a badass because when you're in these high intensity situations, you're able to kind of smash your way through. And obviously your mind is getting stronger as you grow through this, right? And we know the mind yeah. is more powerful than any muscle. So it's this weird dynamic, but what's happening in the long run, I'm talking the big picture is their actual capacity shrinking. Okay. So, so simplistic so terms, you have, off, you have to offset that. Okay. So simplistic terms then, um, I mean, cause you know, high, high intensity is generally shorter. So high intensity yep. shorter. So it's like, I, I prefer that, but at the same time, like if I'm going to go, do a, a, a long endurance type thing. Um, it's going to be less intensity, which is also not that bad either because I'm, I'm sorry, I got a bunch going on in my head right now. Cause I'm thinking consistency is being the key to, um, making, you know, expanding your capacity. So by making it essentially hurt less, it's, I'm more than likely going to train every single day or when I need to, instead of like, man, I really sucked yesterday. I'm just going to put it off today. But so in the interest of watering the roots, like yeah. basic thinking, how do I do that? Yeah. So it's going to be an interesting thing. So 
when it comes to low intensity training, right? This is, this is all about running because we're talking about how, if you don't have energy, you can't run, you can't run fast, you can't run far. And we're not creating energy, we're just recycling it, right? And that low intensity training is so key. So let me, first off, let's kind of define this. Number one, I'll make it simple. So in the most common language, we have the five zone system, mm -hmm. okay? There's seven zone systems. There's three zones. The most commonly used on the Garmin app and all over the world is the five zone system. One, two, three, four, five. Now let's make this, I'll kind of use common speak and then we'll break it down. So zone one is basically going to be almost your recovery. So if I said, if I don't have a heart rate monitor, how do I know I'm doing a zone one effort? If you were had no heart rate monitor, a zone one effort would be if you did a three hour effort and then the second you were done, I said, do the same effort and you should be like, okay, no problem. That's a zone one effort. Okay. Now zone one is mainly about just getting an increase in blood flow. So a lot of people, when they say, oh, I want to increase blood flow, they go for like the Theragons or foam rollers or like a hot and cold set. There's no increased demand for oxygen in the muscle. So you're not really increasing blood flow. So when you start exercising, you actually increase blood flow, like up to 20 fold, like 20, 25 fold. So it's far superior to recover by going for a light walk or a light bike ride than trying to do stuff like that. Hence active recovery kind of yeah, stuff. active recovery. But one more time, we don't want any negative costs. Cause remember, as we go up to the higher zones, there's a cost. So zone one is not really going to stimulate any new changes per se, except for when we get a lot of volume of zone one, we're going to get new capillaries. We're going to get new blood flow. We're going to develop all those pathways and arteries, and we're going to get lots of structures in place. So I want you to think we're kind of laying the foundation or the scaffolding for a strong aerobic system or the heart to be able to pump blood, but we're not really getting fitter from zone one. It's more a recovery stimulus. Okay. Your zone two is the mythical zone two that everyone's been hearing about. And it's all over the internet. And if you haven't heard about it, it's this magic land where all your gains appear. Now, <laughs> the truth is about zone two is endurance world. We call it base building or capacity, or you could call it the roots, right? But all it is, is we're, we're now starting to train at a higher intensity, but we're still mainly using our oxidative, which is we're burning through a lot of fat, right? That's going to be mainly our fuel. Now, why is this crucial? And how do I know I'm in zone two? If I do a zone two effort, so say I run five miles uh, today. If I did zone two, if I run five miles and say I ran five miles in 45 minutes, I should be able to this same day, do that same effort at the same relative pace and intensity. That's if I don't have a heart rate monitor. So I should be able to do that same run twice. If I would do a zone two run, say I didn't have a heart rate monitor, and then I ran it again and my pace was slower, my heart rate was higher, or it was more stressful, then I probably went too fast for a zone two. Now, an easy way to set this is I know a lot of people use their heart rate uh, for their Garmin will set the, the zones. I was about to ask you, how do you it's find still, your it's zone? Still, it's still going to be inaccurate. It's still not going to be ideal. Even the whole heart rate max equations are wildly off. So I'm going to say don't use heart rate max equations like the whole 220 minus age for your max. Yeah. I can get my heart rate up to 235 beats per minute which is more, uh, it's, it, it, it doesn't make sense compared to the heart rate equations, but with a chest strap, it's been tested in a lab. And so you can't rely on those because if I relied on my watch, it wouldn't make sense for my training zones. So to set your zones, we actually want to find out what the top of our zone two is. And we would do that with a talk test. Now a talk test is going to be where we pick a 12 to 15 word sentence. You've got to make one up. I would make a fun one up. <laughs> you can get really creative with it. And you're going to start doing something that like a run or a bike. Um, obviously, a bike would be very simple because there's no technique involved, but it's good to do it for a run. And you're going to repeat this phrase. And basically, if you can say that sentence or that 12 to 15 word sentence with uh, in one breath, 
you're still in zone two. Hmm. Okay. The second you have to start breaking that up or you have to like, you can't say that 12 to 15 word sentence, you have now basically shifted into zone three. And the reason is because when we're in zone two, our respiration just gets deeper. So we start getting deeper inhales and exhales, but our respiration rate, which is how we're, how quickly we're breathing in, doesn't increase. The second we hit zone three, we start breathing at a quicker rate, which is interesting. You can hear it actually, as you get more, as you train more people, you can actually hear without a heart rate monitor. You're like, he just turned into zone three. (laughs) so but if you're doing this at home and setting your own zones so basically you'd repeat that sentence it takes you know i might do this over two runs or two bikes you know and then basically say at 152 beats per minute i can't say that sentence anymore that would be the top of my zone two and then i would zone down down and up you know about 20 beats per minute and then i have my zones interesting Uh, so now i've never heard of the talk test yeah So actually that's your most accurate version. So letting an app determine it is kind of wishy-washy, right? All this tech is, uh, you know, it's getting better, but it's still not perfect. Even your whoop, your or ring, they're getting amazing. I know or ring just released its new generation, but there's still, I would, I would do a simple talk test, 12 to 15 word sentence. That's going to be the top of your zone two. Now, why is zone two considered so magical? Because we're starting to get all these amazing benefits of oxygenating my system, laying, building new structures. So I want you to think about it. It's almost like building new highways. You're preparing the roads to be able to handle more cars. You're building your capacity. You can think of your body like a highway. The more roads, the more cars, the more intensity you can handle. But we're not getting the negative effects of high intensity quite yet or not as much. So we're not getting all the metabolites. We're not getting all the stress hormones. So kind of think of as that's where we get all the good, but we're not getting all the bad and all the stuff that takes time to recover from. So it's not that zone two is a like cure for everything. It's you don't get all the bad with it. And the bad is more increased recovery time, increased stress. Uh, You're starting to use your larger, more type two uh, muscle fibers, those are your big, strong, fast twitch fibers uh, and all that stuff. And guess what? Recovery time from zone two is like you don't need to really recover from it because why? You're not tapping into all that stressful, those stressful systems. So I, I, that's where, yeah, I can keep going into zone three. Or yeah, I, well. 